morning. You turn to your neighbor and tell him it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. You moved the mountains. You told the wind and waves be still. You cast out demons. Bid the empty soul be filled. And now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. You hold redemption, made accusers drop their stones. You showed us mercy with your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim Jesus' name. Walls fall down. Jesus' name. Strongholds pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And it's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight, or today, this afternoon. What is it? 
we're, we're off schedule. Amen. But uh, we're coming into a wonderful week of camp meeting. And of course, today we're doing things a little differently. But great to be in the house of the Lord. Great to see you this morning. And, and uh, you made a great choice coming into the house of the Lord today. Amen. Isn't God good today? Let's give him another hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. Amen. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer today. Amen. And our prayer focus today is for the camp meeting. Amen. We want God to have, a, have his way among us. And we want hearts and lives to be affected and changed. And we want his spirit to, to uh, have a free course among us. Amen. So we're going to be praying today for especially this uh, week's camp meeting and that God would uh, do what only he can do. Amen. And then also uh, today we want to remember those that are not here today. Some have been battling sickness and so on, but great to be, uh, uh, to be able to call upon the name of the Lord for help. So let's remember those that are not here today and how many came with a need or you're connected to somebody with a need today? Amen. Lift your hand today. The Lord knows those needs today. And let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Amen. Ask him to be with us today. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. God, for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your presence even already this morning. Now, Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you would, Lord, uh, I, uh, be Lord, Lord and Savior, oh God, in our camp meeting this week, God. Anoint, Lord, touch, move by your spirit, revive, Lord. Oh God, do the work of the Holy Ghost among us, we pray. Let your spirit have its free course among us. Oh God, and Lord Jesus, we pray today, God, for those that are not here, the house of the Lord, be with them today, oh God. Touch those that need a touch in body. Strengthen today. Lift up, we pray. And oh God, this morning we ask, Lord Jesus, that you address every, Lord, uh, every need expressed today by an upraised hand. Oh God, you know every situation, every circumstance. We pray, God, that you would work and move as only you can move today. Oh, God, in each one of these requests, we pray for the salvation of souls today, for those within our scope and sphere of influence today, those that surround us in this city, oh, God, those that we work with, those that we are connected to. We pray your presence, your spirit would reach out and touch them today choreograph their lives so that God they might come Lord into your influence today oh God we thank you Lord Jesus be with us in this service today as we glorify magnify you in Jesus name amen everybody said in Jesus name Jesus. let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time hallelujah <laughs> praise God Amen, amen. Just real quickly and wonderful to see already people from the camp uh, all getting all geared up for camp meeting and here this morning. Uh, we appreciate you being here. And, uh, and so in light of camp meeting, no connect groups this week. So no midweek here. Uh, but uh, we encourage everybody to get in as much of camp meeting. Camp meeting starts actually tonight with Recovery Ministries, uh, tonight at six o'clock, but the main camp starts tomorrow on Monday and uh, Monday night, uh, and then Tuesday through Friday, day and, and night. Lots of stuff happening, lots of uh, activity services uh, in most uh, day sessions and evening sessions. You will uh, not lack for something to be a part of, so we encourage you to get up to camp meeting as much as possible. If you don't remember the address or don't have the address and you want to go, let us know. We'll make sure that you have directions. Amen. Amen. It's so wonderful again to be together. We're going to receive our tithe and offering this morning as we do. Greet one another. Amen. In the name of the Lord today, make sure you welcome somebody today in Jesus name. Praise in the valley, 
praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. This praise is the waters. My enemies drown As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, yes, I'll praise because I know you're still in control. This praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. Oh, my praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. Yes, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Yes, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Yes, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise because you're sovereign, praise because you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise. I will praise the Lord, oh my soul, yes, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise when I feel it, praise when I go. Oh, yes, I'll praise because I know you're still in control, yeah. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound, oh. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down, oh, yeah. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. So, yes, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord, oh my soul. Yes, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise because you're sovereign, praise because you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. 
praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise cause you sob, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh 
Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. Oh, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns, freedom reigns, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns, freedom reigns, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Lord, there is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is freedom. There is freedom. freedom that comes into the house of the Lord when this liberty of the spirit begins to move in the house when God's people begin to worship him and exalt his name is exactly what we feel here in this place this morning I am so thankful for the spirit of our God I'm thankful for the opportunity to not just have dead boring church but we have the opportunity to come into the presence of the living God this morning and to lift up a living savior who is looking for the praises of his people to rise before him Amen, that he could bless us with his spirit and his presence. Would you lift your hands again to the Lord and your voices together and take a moment in his presence and just express appreciation for who he is. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for freedom this morning in your presence. Thank you for liberty, God. Thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you for your spirit, Lord, that has inhabited the praises of your people today. We worship you, Jesus, and we give you all the praise and the glory for it today. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You were the word at the beginning. One with God.
beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. Jesus, you Great, your love was greater. What can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is! Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. And death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the most of sin. the Lord one more time today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. We praise you. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. And he gave that name, power and authority, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. 
Hallelujah. I choose to bow now. For one day every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. But I confess today. Amen. He's my Lord and my Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Can we love him just one more time? Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Amen. Amen. So wonderful to be together this morning and just warming up for camp meeting. Amen. And it's great. It's going to be a great week and the presence of the Lord is going to be with us. And... Uh, Wonderful fellowship with our brothers and sisters across the province, even Yellowknife, uh, Northwest Territories. So it's going to be a wonderful week. And uh, just mentioned next Sunday, we'll be back to regular schedule. All the local people say regular schedule. Regular. Amen. Back to regular schedule. Amen. We're doing things a little differently today because, of course, people are getting ready, packing and so on to go to camp. And, uh, and that's, uh, we try to give you a little time to do that. Second Corinthians chapter four, it's wonderful uh, to have some of the, the early campers uh, from camp meeting already with us today and we welcome each and every one uh, today. Great to see Clarence again today, God bless you, amen. And uh, just wonderful to be together, amen. You never know, you never know who's gonna be at church. That is uh, wonderful for the people in the congregation. That's terrifying sometimes to the pastor because you just never know. You just never know. Amen. You get all worked up, geared up, prayed up, ready to go on Sunday and people are doing one thing or another or here, there, and yawn and it's not always a great, uh, a great experience <laughs> from that standpoint. Amen. Isn't that right, Brother Farmer, Aaron Farmer? <laughs> he, just, he didn't understand that before, but he understands that now. Amen. But it's wonderful to be together today. Isn't it great to know Jesus? Amen. Amen. Very simple subject this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, and yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You're that earthen vessel, by the way. And the treasure is in you. Amen. And the apostle is helping us through the anointing of the spirit and the writing of the scripture today to understand that we have this valuable treasure in us. And there's a reason for that. Amen. I want to direct your attention to Psalms. You may be seated. Psalms 121. Psalms uh, 121 is part of the, in the King James uh, Version of the English Bible, we'll say a song of degrees, but uh, is probably more uh, uh, aptly uh, uh, translated a song of ascents. These are a collection of psalms that were used by Israel on their ascending to worship uh, the Lord in the city of God in Jerusalem. And uh, this would be one of the psalms that they would uh, chant or sing on their way uh, to ascend to worship God in the holy city. And, uh, and so Psalms 121, a song of ascents, I will Lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help. Everybody say, my help. my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He won't sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel, 
And could we say, he that keepeth the church neither shall neither slumber nor sleep. And the Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shade on the right hand. And the sun shall not smite thee by day nor moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul and the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time and even forevermore. Amen. And so the psalmist writes and he says this, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And he quickly enforces this understanding. He says, my help cometh from the Lord. I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about knowing where our help comes from. Amen. It's always good to know how to get help in times of need. Well, what I'm talking about today is more than just having a God that is so much like the, the little red boxes in our public buildings that says pull in a case of emergency. I'm talking about knowing with a, a constant, intimate knowledge and understanding who the source of our help is. Now, it's easy for us if we uh, get down the road a little ways and God has done some great things in our lives and has restored our lives and given to us, amen, a measure of success. And in our pilgrim journey, we, uh, we have been growing to forget sometimes where our help really comes from. One of the things that I have, I have done for almost all of my adult years when I pray is I, I say somewhere in that time of prayer, Lord, you are my source. You are my strength. You are my help. You're, you're the, the very center of everything that's good in my life. And it's not that God needs to be reminded, but I need to be reminded, amen, because I need to know where my help comes from. Hallelujah. And, he, and the God that I serve today is the very source, the center of my life. And the more quickly I can entrench that understanding and idea in my heart and my mind, the closer I am, amen, to the help that I need to accomplish what God has placed me in this earth for. Each of us today have been, have been placed where we are on purpose and for the purpose of God. And one of the things, of course, that has been given to you by your natural life is the opportunity to come to know God, amen, and develop a relationship with him. Now, if you miss that, you've missed the very purpose and the intent of God giving you life, amen. He did not bring you to this place and point in your life to just be a successful person to have a successful uh, career, to enjoy the niceties and the blessings of life. Amen. He has brought you to this time and this place on purpose. Amen. You are a people. You are a person of destiny. Amen. God has plans in your life. Amen. He's got a will to express in your life. And we need to understand that. Amen. So that we can understand also that what we have been called to is beyond our natural ability. Amen. Amen. And so the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Amen. My help cometh from the Lord. 
this elemental understanding was in, entrenched in his heart and his mind. Hey Amen. He was looking for the God who was the source of his life. Hey Amen. He was looking to the one and only one that could bring to him what he really needed. Oh, friend, today, hey Amen. We need today, if ever before, we need today to know from whence our help comes from. And just the knowing of where our help comes from, hey amen, will change the entirety, the paradigm of your life because God wants to show himself strong in your life today. Hallelujah. He is looking for the opportunity. He's looking for, amen, the, uh, the right moments to show himself. And so this is what the apostle Paul was alluding to in the scripture that we read this morning. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? That the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Not of us. The knowledge and understanding that we cannot. We are incomplete at best. Amen. We are insufficient on our best day that we cannot live without the source of our lives, that God must be in the mix and the picture of our life and directing us and leading us and guiding us every day that we live. Our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the and the curiosity of the whole exercise of God and man is why, why, why would God do this? Why would he choose someone like me? Why would he choose someone like you? If you ever take time to reflect and inventory your life, you would have to say, I'm sure, like myself, there are days of, of mistakes, missteps, misjudgments. Certainly today, uh, I have proved to myself that I cannot do this on my own. Amen. Why would God, why would God choose to invest, amen, such a beautiful great treasure as his presence and place it in earthen vessels. And it is answered very quickly because that the excellency of the power might be seen to be of God and not of man. We do something good. We like a little pat on the back, don't we? Amen. If nobody else will pat our back, we'll pat our back. Amen. We'll tell everybody, you know, Little Jack Horner sat in the corner. Hey Amen. What a good boy am I. That's what he said. We have the same tendency. Hey Amen. To, uh, to uh, take credit sometimes where credit is not due. I believe in giving honor to where honor is due. I believe, hey amen, in greatness. Greatness in you and greatness in, in mankind. There is a measure of greatness, and there can be there can be a measure of righteousness that is of man of ourselves. But that righteousness, the Scripture tells us, comparative to the holiness and righteousness of God, is like filthy rags. It is insufficient. There is not a day today or any day before this day where I. Amen. Have had the righteousness that is sufficient, amen, to justify me from my character and nature of sin. Oh, hallelujah. I'm here today to say that the reason why God chose you is that He could show His power, amen, in your life. Hallelujah. The excellency of the power of God is seen in the weakness of human vessels. We must today understand 
that it is the presence of God today that makes the difference in our lives. It is God's spirit that makes the difference in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me quickly give you three reasons the scripture gives to us. Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. What is Titus saying here? Amen. In 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done. He's saying we do not qualify. We do not qualify. Hey Amen. On our best day, I don't qualify. The Bible tells us that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We do not qualify. No matter how much righteousness we may have in ourselves, we don't qualify. No matter how many good deeds we do, we don't qualify. I've had so many people tell me in Bible studies and, and in witnessing over the years, but pastor, I'm a good person. I do good things. I'm a good citizen. I do things. I try to be a moral person. And that's all wonderful. Hey Amen. That's all great. And I commend you for that. But on your best day, your good works does not qualify you for that which is not able to be accessed. We are born and shapen in iniquity. We are born into sin, not by choice of ours, but by the sin nature passed upon us by our father Adam. And so it is today. All of us, all of us, no matter how good or how profane, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And hence, because we are judged a sinner, we, amen, need a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We need justification. Hallelujah. And such, the apostle said, were some of you, but you've been washed. Ha, <laughs> you've been washed. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says we are saved by the washing of regeneration. We are, have been washed and we have been sanctified. Hallelujah. Amen. We are saved by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When that spirit comes into the mix, that which has been dead and buried with Christ now rises to walk in the newness of life through the empowerment of the Spirit. And we who were not, amen, a people, we who had no inheritance, we who were outside the commonwealth, we who were, amen, short of the glory of God, now are justified by the Spirit and the cleansing of a Savior today. Amen. Today, my friend, I can say I am saved or in the process or under the security of Christ's salvation because, amen, he went to a cross and gave his life and shed his blood, amen, and poured it out for me and for you so that we would qualify. But in myself, I do not qualify. We are not saved by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy and to his grace. Amen. Number two and three, we find in the message of God to Zerubbabel. Amen. In the uh, passage of Zechariah, the message comes back to, uh, to uh, Joshua the high priest and to Zerubbabel. This is the message of God to Zerubbabel. It is not by might. It is not by power, but it's by my spirit. Amen. My second point to today, amen, that we are insufficient. The scripture says it is not by might. Amen. That is to say it is not by our will. I cannot will myself to be justified. I cannot will myself. Amen. I have not enough intellect, amen. It is 
outside of my grasp of talent and ability. I know a lot of talented people. I see a lot of talent in this house today. People with ability. God gave you that ability. And just on a side note, if you're not using it for Jesus and for his purpose, amen, then it's a total waste of God's provision. Amen. But God has given you ability and given you talent and given you, amen, the mechanisms by which to be used of God today. But at the end of the day, it does not rest upon my might my will, my intellect, my talent, and my ability. Now the danger is, the danger is we come to the place in living for God where God has added so much to our lives. You remember the scripture perhaps that a man's gift maketh room for itself. And in the process of being, amen, cleansed and washed and picked up out of our sin and then then employed in the work of God and being part of the church and 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 uh, and ministry and witnessing and and the work of the church and all of those things they add to who we are and God meant for it to add to us but in all of that we've got to remember that in our best day I'm not smart enough on my best day my will is not strong enough. Amen. And I, I, can, I can be pretty willful sometimes when I really put my head to it. Amen. My kids found that out growing up. Amen. We have a will. And if it's not channeled right, it will cause us great spiritual harm. Amen. We cannot rest on might. We cannot rest on our will, our intellect. Amen. I tell you today, amen, God will bring a situation in your life to bring a revelation to you. Amen. That you're not strong enough by your own will and, and you're not able enough with your own, your own intellect and you don't have the talent and ability. Amen. God will take us down sometimes just to get us back up to where we need to be. Amen. And I'm here today to say to you that there's a power in knowing where your help comes from. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not by human intellect. Paul walks into Athens and uh, there all the Athenians and strangers I stood on that, that hill this last April in the city of Athens, the Acropolis uh, Mount, and there the apostle Paul comes and the Bible says in the 17th chapter of the book of, uh, the 21st verse of the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. There were some pretty smart guys on Mars Hill. Hey Amen. They'd come from all over the world. And that was the place to be if you were in philosophy or religious pursuits and you wanted to uh, to stress uh, knowledge. The Grecian Empire was an empire that stressed knowledge and the learning of things. And, and even in this uh, Roman Empire setting, this, the, the residual of that continues, even continues to this day. And all these people were gathered there so that they might know and, and exercise their intellect. Amen. Have you ever had a good, uh, uh, you know, a good debate with somebody going. And, and you know what I'm talking about. Your juices, juices can get flowing after a while, you know. And uh, you can get thinking pretty, pretty uh, well of yourself. Amen. And, uh, and this was what was happening on Mars Hill. And they spent their days seeking and know, in fact, the very invitation of the Apostle Paul to stand that day and declare Jesus was based on this was another religion, a new thing that they had not yet heard. And so that Paul began to speak to them that day. And in the message that Paul gave, 
he says this, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not with temple made with hands, neither is worshiped by men's hands, as though, notice this, he needeth anything. God does not need anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Listen to his message that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from any one of us. For in him, amen, in Jesus, we live and move and have our being. Oh, friend, my, today, if we can get that down, if we can know from whence cometh my help, if we can know, amen, the source of our very life and our very strength, then all the rest of the stuff will fall in its proper place. But we've got to know in whom we have believed. We've got to know that he's able. We've got to know that he can help us. Hallelujah. Thirdly, the message of Zerubbabel also said it's not by power. That is, it is not by man's strength. Amen. I have known people who are weak, and I have known people who are strong. And I have witnessed over the years people of great strength. But again, at the end of the day, not a one of us are strong enough. Hallelujah. The best, best thing I've been able to do and learn to do when I get to the end of my rope, amen, and I don't have the strength anymore, and I'm asking God for strength, and while in, I'm in that twilight zone between my need and my answer, I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, walking in the same direction. Amen. By and by, amen, the morning will come. By and by, the answer will be there. By and by, amen, God will deliver. Amen. By and by, God will fight my battles for me. In the meantime, I know where my help comes from, so I'm just going to keep my feet Amen. One right after another, headed in the same direction I've always been heading since I accepted the Lord Jesus and began to follow him. Oh, friend, today, it's in knowing where your help comes from. Your, your, this world that you live in, your world doesn't understand this. They have nowhere to go. They have nothing to lean on. Look at, look at our world falling to pieces Amen. And, and uh, the shambles of lives and the hopelessness, amen, manifest in their lives. And they, they don't have what I'm preaching to you to, today about. But what you have access to do it, it to today is the very source of life, the very source of your strength, the ability today. Amen. And if all else fails, just stand, just stand, because God is always bigger than your challenge. God is always bigger than your need. Hallelujah. Amen. We haven't sufficient power to accomplish what we need. This, the message was, it is not by might nor by your strength or power, but, G, but the Lord said, it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. By my spirit, saith the Lord. It is the power of God that is our source and our strength and not our own. Amen. Amen. I, I, have, I have to work at this because uh, I always do everything I can first. And then I turn to God. <laughs> It's just part of me. Amen. I, I have to deal with it. And that's why I remind myself constantly in prayer. 
Amen. He's my, Lord, you're my source. You're my strength. I can't do this without you. I can't do it without my help. I need you today. Amen. I needed you yesterday, and I need you again today. And if you give me tomorrow, I'll need you tomorrow. Amen. You are my help, and I turn to you, and I look to you because I can't do this in myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By my spirit, as many as are led of the spirit of God are the sons of God, the children of God. It's by allowing the spirit to work in our lives, we are, we are validated as the children of God. Amen. We must, we must by necessity today, amen. Know the power of God, the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. I cannot tell you how many times over the years I've faced impossible situations, humanly impossible situations. Amen. And watched God take care of them while I stood by and witnessed the power of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels for a reason so that we can understand and comprehend that the power is of God and not of ourselves. Yeah. Amen. If we're not careful, we're going to be uh, like some of the, uh, those that uh, have, uh, have allowed the gospel to be perverted in their, in their minds and begin to think that we are the reason, the source, the ability. And I'm here today to say, Yes, there are charismatic people in the world. Yes, there are people with great talent. Yes, there are people with great authority and, and uh, ability. Amen. But I'm here today to tell you that your might, your power, amen, your qualification will not stand you in good stead. It takes the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. And that's why the Lord said, amen, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Why? so you could be my witnesses so that the work of God could go forward so his purpose could be heralded in a lost and dying world and so God put this treasure in earthen vessels that the power, the excellency of the power may be of God hallelujah we need to know Amen. And I know in the abstract we all know what I'm preaching today, but in particular today, do we get away from it? Do we go days on end without thinking about it? I want the Lord to know. Amen. If you're looking for somebody to show yourself strong to, here's somebody that you need to show yourself strong for because I am insufficient. Amen. I have faced so many situations so insufficient, so threatened, so anxiety ridden at times. Amen. Challenge has been great at times. The impossibility has reared its head over and over again. But I can go against my Goliaths because I know it's not in my own strength. Amen. David looks at Goliath and says, you come to me with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Jehovah. Amen. I got something working for me. Amen. That, that you don't have. And so I'm not afraid to meet my challenge. I don't know how God's going to deliver me. I don't know what the answer is going to be. I don't know how God's going to perform the miracle. All I know is I can't do it, but I've got a God who can do it. Praise God. And he will come through when I need him the most. Let's stand together this morning knowing, knowing. Can I ask you this question? It, is your, I don't know if you're in challenge or you're facing anything today. Amen. Have you ever noticed that God lets our challenges grow bigger and bigger and bigger? Well, there's a reason for that. 
because he's waiting for you to realize the revelation come that you can't do this. Amen. Brother Archie, you've had some big, big challenges that are beyond your ability. Amen. All of us in this room have had big challenges. Amen. I thank God, praise God, that you're standing here with strength and health. Amen. It's because of God. Not because of the doctor's diagnosis, not because it, it, it works out on paper or it's logical, but amen, it's God that maketh us alive. He's our source. He's our strength. Now, is your challenge big enough yet for a miracle? Is your, amen, time of testing, if you're going through a test, is it bad enough yet for God to do a miracle? Because as long as it's possible, with your strength and ability, with men, it's impossible, but not with God. As long as it's possible, you're likely not going to see God step into your situation. But the faster you can get a revelation, God, I can't do this by myself. Furthermore, I don't want to do this by myself. I am totally dependent on you. And now watch God step into your situation. It's just all in knowing where your help comes from. And our help comes from the Lord. I like this, the book of the writing of Hebrews, 13th chapter, the fifth and sixth verse. Let your conversation, your lives be without covetousness. Hello? Don't always be wanting something else. I've been blessed by God over the years, but I don't need necessarily anything else. I need Jesus. Amen. Let your lives be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. It's enough. It's enough to know Jesus. I know people that found Jesus in their life, built a relationship with him and died in poverty with nothing. In fact, I would suggest there are people all over this globe that that could be their story today. But they were content because they found a friend in Jesus. They found a solution Be content with such things as you have. For he saith, saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I can look at my challenge. I can speak to my spiritual enemy and say, bring it on. Bring it on. Life can throw what it will. Bring it on. Because I've got a helper. I've got somebody that works in my life. You say, well, I'm in for a fight, a spiritual fight. Well, bring it on. Because the Lord fights my battles for me. Hallelujah. I had somebody say to me many years ago, you better do something about thus and so. You see what's happening? Yes, sir, see what's happening. You better do something about it. It's going to cost you. And I told them then, because I had already learned this lesson, There are some things you take your hands off and you just leave it alone because God will fight your battles for you. 
And I said, God will take care of it. A few weeks, guess what? God took care of it. I didn't have to even get involved in it. I didn't even have to touch it. God just took care of it. I've seen that happen over and over and over again. Why? Because I'm learning where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. If there's any good things that happen this week, it won't be because of the personalities involved, the preachers that have been lined up. It will be because of the Lord. And I wonder as we close this service today and all of us get ready for camp meeting week that we could just take a few moments to reflect in the presence of the Lord. God, you are my source, my strength my help. Amen. You are the center of my life. Could we do that this morning? Could we come into his presence for a few moments? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, so this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Now I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, oh, this is how I fight my battles. Yes, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, it may look 
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you this is how I fight my battle how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. He never promised that the cross would not be heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our Lord will show up oh and he will take you through the fire again promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. So just remember when you're standing the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again he never promised the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to find he never offered victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of and the adversary says, give in, just hold 
just hold on. Our Lord will show up, oh, and he will take you through the fire again. Yes, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. So just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision, and the adversary says give in. Just hold on, our Lord will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. Just hold on, our Lord will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad today I know where my help comes from. Praise God. Aren't you happy that the Lord's involved in your life? Amen. Could we just thank him one more time today? Hallelujah. God, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So wonderful to be together and this is just the starting point of a wonderful week and uh, looking forward to what God is going to be doing this week. And I want to encourage all the, the local folks, please try to make it up to camp. You will be blessed if you can't stay there for the uh, good portion of the week. Amen. Certainly get up for some night services, some day services, and uh, let the Lord touch you and renew you and and uh, enjoy the wonderful week of fellowship. Amen. I want to say it's so wonderful to have uh, Aaron back home, Christy, his wife, from, he's pastoring now in Dawson Creek. And, um, and Christy's making him look good. <laughs> Amen. Good to have Mike and Danielle here today. Mike is going to be planning a work in North Vancouver, a very challenging area. And, uh, and so we want to uh, be in prayer with them as well as hopefully they can come back and be with us when it's uh, not a camp meeting time. Every schedule is all in the uproar. Uh, but uh, we're going to be praying for him and it's great to have uh, Michael and Kayla. Kayla was part of our youth group for many years and grew up here. And we love her. And, and of course, we have to automatically love Michael because of her. So. <laughs> but they're planning a work. They're already on site in, in Duncan. Yes. And we just believe in that God's going to open doors. Yes. Amen. Because that's how it happens. It's not our ability. Is this your last Sunday? Oh my goodness, Val Delise. We knew she was leaving, going back to Brazil. And uh, what city was it? Fortaleza City. Fortaleza City. And so we're going to be praying. In fact, when we dismiss, we're going to pray for her. That God will go with her and we're going to try to stay in contact with her. But. All right, so we're going to miss her, but she's gonna, you're going to come back and visit, right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so let's pray for Val Valise as she makes her way back to Brazil. Amen. And uh, let's pray for our camp meeting today in dismissing. Lord, we thank you today, God, for your goodness. Lord, we pray that you would rest your hand on Val Delise today. Be with her as she travels home, oh God. I pray that, Lord, your spirit would 
continue to work and to lead and to guide, oh God. Let your, Lord, touch be upon her today. Oh God, bring her back to visit, Lord, we pray, and help her, Lord, as she goes about reestablishing her life in Brazil. God, we pray today, Lord, for the camp meeting, God, that you would work and move and touch hearts and souls. We thank you today, God, that we know that by this time next week, you will have done some marvelous things in people's lives. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Go with us. Lord, allow us to travel safely and we and enjoy the wonderful week of camp meeting, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Clap your hands to the Lord one more time. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, you're dismissed in Jesus' name.